So we decided to do the Kintai Uranium Project by Chemico Australia. Uh, it is an operation of open cut uranium mine. It is located approximately 270 kilometers northeast of Newman in the shore of Pilbara, Western Australia. And the proposal has gone through stages of EIA processes under EPA and Public Environmental Review. Um, EPA also methodically examined this proposal and evaluated the potential impacts to key environment and it also provides a mitigation approach. And the main focus here is that the proposal followed adequate application of the mitigation hierarchy and precautionary principle, therefore biodiversity offsets was not even needed. It also planned different environmental management plans from the start um, by being transparent to provide relevant information to the public and being open to public review and stakeholder consultation. And later in this discussion, we're going to compare a similar case study, um, which is the EIA of uranium mining in Labrador, Canada. Chemico Australia's Kintar Uranium Mine underwent rigorous environmental impact assessment in accordance with the EPA and Department of Mines and Petroleum. Due to the significant um, environmental impacts of mining uranium, the EPA recommended strict reg regulation on the project and set conditions regarding species of conservation significance. The species in those area were the Bilby, Mulgara and Rock Wallaby. Unfortunately, Kamiko adhered to the mitigation hierarchy in which biodiversity offsets are only to be used as a last resort. And as they did such a thorough planning, um, they didn't even need uh, biodiversity offsets. Yet um, Kamiko went one step further to voluntarily provide financial support during the lifetime of the mine to the Kalamili National Park. Kamiko also voluntarily joined an industry initiative led to aid landscape landscape scale fire management planning. Alternatively, the Labrador uranium mine in Canada saw developers begin construction before their environmental impact assessment and proposals were submitted, let alone approved. Um, regulators noted many inaccurate claims in their documents, including the absence of any information regarding local caribou populations, which are found in the area. Additionally, indigenous Inuit communities also hunt caribou in those areas. Comparing these two projects shows that Kamiko followed industry best practices, whereas the development in Labrador faced significant controversy and legal implications.